Mr. Speaker, once again I wish to thank you and indeed your Honorable Prime Minister and Member for Castries East for the opportunity to present to the people of St. Lucia and this Honorable House, in particularly our business community, the policy direction and area of focus of my ministry, which is the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs for the current financial year and budget of 2023-24. But, Mr. Deputy Speaker, with your permission, let me take a pause and to honor and thank my constituent of Soufre Fosheshak, on whose behalf I stand today. I want to thank my constituent for the support that they continue to provide. And today, I want to tell them that I commit once again to serve them. Mr. Deputy Speaker, earlier, while making your own presentation here in this Honorable House, you made reference to the behavior of the United Workers' Party in Sufre about two weeks ago. Um, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, quite a few people question whether, not close enough. Quite a few people question why we allowed the why we gave permission to have that meeting at Old Trafford. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it's a democratic country. And we felt that it was fair game to allow the members opposite to use the platform to speak to the people of Sufre. But what we saw was a party empty and bereft of ideas. That's what we saw. So instead of them using the opportunity to present the policies, they showed how they were not prepared and they are not prepared to take these people to the promised land. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to invite the people of Sufre on May 1st to be at the same spot on May 1st at 4 o'clock where we will launch the Vendors Association of Sufre. And we will launch it with 90 members. We will not insult, but we will sow the seed. <laughs> we will have approximately 90 vendors in one association. We will partner with the Fosheshak Cooperative Credit Union. We will partner with the Sufre Foundation to plant a seed. To plant a seed, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, back to the issue before us, and that is the 2023-2024 budget, Mr. Speaker. When the Honorable Prime Minister presented, in his address, he focused on three strat strategic priorities for our government, namely health, security, and economic sustainability. The issue of health and health service is critical for all of us, Mrs. Mr. Deputy Speaker. And as Pal Rep for Sufre, I was elated when I saw a provision in the budget for the commencement of the new Sufre. I want to take this moment to thank both the Minister of Finance and
And this facility, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this MSME loan grant facility is an EC $10 million facility that is open and targeting some 500 micro and small medium enterprises. Mr. Speaker, this is an EC $10 million loan facility negotiated by the Minister of Finance with the Caribbean Development Bank. This initiative was launched on the 24th of April. Not wrong, sorry. This facility was launched in March, but on the 24th of April, we were able to have an inaugural MSME Grand Check Award, where we have distributed checks to six beneficiaries under the program. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, we have received over 100 applications under this program. What we have done, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and you didn't mention it in the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, when we had the technical break, I was speaking on the MSME loan grant facility and I was saying that so far we had just over 100 persons applying and I want to take this moment to again encourage all business owners, small business owners and persons who are interested between the ages of 31 to 60 to bring in their application and if you have any challenges in preparing your business plan, we at the Ministry of Commerce will help you with this. It is your government trying to ensure that we give you an opportunity of a lifetime. And I want to urge you to seize that opportunity. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, under the area of um, entrepreneurial development. While we went and we had this outreach for the MSME loan grant facility, we were having a request from persons 60 and above. And the request was, what is in this for us? Or why have you not addressed our needs? So Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Today I want to inform the over 60s that we at the Ministry of Commerce have not forgotten you, that we've heard you, we appreciate that you have special skills, and that we will work with you to develop a customized business support package. And we will come back to the table to address you. Under that same subheading, Mr. Deputy Speaker, technical support for vendors. Our vendors are very hardworking, applying their craft within these markets, offering a diverse range of goods and services. These vendors deserve every opportunity to continue to grow their business, increase their revenue, and expand their focus. For these reasons, Mr. Speaker, my ministry, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and Tourism, will work collaboratively during this fiscal year to put a plan in place to assist our vendors. But I must say that I have started in Sufra, and uh, the ball on May 1st, I am launching my vendors association so that we put the structure in place to assist our vendors. I urge, I urge, I urge my other colleagues in this honorable house to continue putting, let us start putting structures in place. Old Trafford, May 1st, 4 o'clock. Put the structures in place so that we can help our various stakeholders. Mr. Speaker, it's also important for us to support the vendors in adapting to change 
our visitors who visit us do not work with cash anymore. They do not work with traveler's checks. Instead, they work with debit cards and credit cards. And we are committing this year to work with the financial centers to ensure that our vendors have an avenue to accept debit and credit cards so that the sales could increase and that the businesses could grow. Mr. Speaker, in the area, Deputy Speaker, in the area of e-commerce, we all know that the future of business, whether it's in St. Lucia or globally, resides in digitization. And Mr. Speaker, I want to applaud the work currently being done by the public service in terms of public service modernization, as well as the Ministry of Education and the thrust towards introducing smart technology within our classrooms. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, my ministry wants to report that it's in its second year of implementing the St. Lucia digitization program, an initiative funded in part by the OAS and the government of St. Lucia. Through this collaboration, we have enlisted four e-commerce platforms to help lead the thrust towards digitization of our St. Lucian businesses. I take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to applaud our external parties, the OAS, for their continued support. I also welcome the intervention of USAID through its recently announced Caribbean Business Enabling Environment Reform Initiative, which will also be lending needed support to St. Lucia in the field of e-commerce. Mr. Speaker, again, the OAS is also working with us in another program, Women Economic Empowerment Initiative, geared at assisting women in the region to participate in the digital economy. The goal of this 36-month project which is funded by the United States, is to sensitize women to the opportunities and develop capacity to benefit from the digital economy. Mr. Speaker, only last week, we had a call for expression of interest, which was issued by the OAS. And we're really hoping, Mr. Speaker, that our MSMEs, the same way persons who are participating in the MSME program will also take advantage of this program. Mr. Speaker, under the same subhead, we are looking at the area of business incubation. Since returning to office in 2021, I've had the opportunity to liaise daily with entrepreneurs and business owners across all constituencies and across all industries. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I have concluded that the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well here in St. Lucia. But despite this, there is a critical element which is lacking. That element comprises of the facilities, the infrastructure, and targeted technical support that helps take a manufacturer from the cottage industry and product prototype into mass production, into standardization, into industrialization, and eventually into market dominance. We need facilities to better nurture these entrepreneurs. So Mr. Speaker, we need to delve into the business incubation business. I am pleased to report, Mr. Speaker, that we have had discussion with our partners, Invest St. Lucia, Export St. Lucia, and we have identified a place in Otsa to house this initiative. However, however, Mr. Speaker, apart from housing this initiative, we need to fund and retrofit the facility. I know that the business persons would say that they've heard about incubation for a long time. But I'm saying now that we are moving from just talking about it to taking the requisite action, Mr. Deputy Speaker. 
we have identified this issue as a major bottleneck in growing our productive sector, resulting in many product prototypes and so many initiatives going under. This year, we will consult, we will plan, we will identify funding for this critical project. Mr. Speaker, I now look at the second area that we are looking at, and that is promoting quality standards through the Bureau of Standards. Mr. Speaker, we cannot speak about entrepreneurial development if we do not focus on standards, packaging, and labeling of our domestic products. In this fiscal year, we will welcome the commencement of an approved project funded by the Caribbean Development Bank to facilitate compliance to packaging and labeling requirements by MSMEs, which will complement the assistance av available under the MSME grant loan facility. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we expect some 200 MSMEs to benefit from enhanced packaging and labeling under this initiative. Mrs. Deputy Speaker, the Bureau Standard has played a critical role in, the upper, in making sure that we have a national agricultural diagnostic facility. And through collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, we provide effective conformity assessment mechanisms for the assessment of safe agricultural products to local, regional, and international markets. Mr. Speaker, the facility will offer services to the sector in the areas of soil testing, nutrition analysis, and the testing of our waters. The facility will assist the manufacturers and agro-processors with the testing of inputs and finished products to allow for improved agricultural practices, certification, and market access. The Bureau of Standards Compliance Department has achieved ISO 17021 accreditation in October 2022, which will ensure that our conformity assessment process with respect to the inspection, electrical appliances, testing, and label assessments meet international requirements. Mr. Speaker, John Public can have further confidence in the quality and safety of the products that we import. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, in May 2022, my government instituted a mandatory conformity measure for new and used vehicles. This measure is administered by the Bureau and it addresses issues to the importation of defective vehicles and reduces the impact of disposal of non-compliant ones on the environment. Consumers can now have valuable information about their purchase and be able to choose options that are safer for the environment. In the area of metrology, Mr. Speaker, our metrology department has, at the Bureau has now received ISO accreditation for ISO 17025. With this initiative, Mr. Speaker, the Bureau will do the following. Ensure all utility meters and automatic catch weighing instruments used in St. Lucia have valid pattern approval. Two, ensure all automated blood pressure meters are clinically validated as a prerequisite for verification. This measure has improved the quality of blood pressure meters imported into St. Lucia, thus enhancing the quality of health services to our citizens. Mr. Speaker, these strides in the development of our quality infrastructure in particular, increasing our production of products that satisfies the various national, regional, and international standards will enhance our ability to export goods to CARICOM and beyond. 
three, we speak about increase of St. Lucia's exports. Mr. Speaker, as a small developing country, our internal markets is likewise relatively small. Therefore, we must look beyond our shores for larger markets to support the growth and development of our firms. Mr. Speaker, one area of target for us this year is to strengthen trade relations with our sister country of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, currently Guyana is experiencing exponential growth in economic activities driven by recent discovery of oil. The injection of over US $170 billion over the next two years is heralding significant growth across every single sector of the Guyanese economy. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, my government has endorsed a strategy to explore opportunities for increased trade with Guyana. This strategy, Mr. Speaker, is being coordinated by Export St. Lucia. We have had at least one visit to Guyana in June 2022, where we focused on the construction industry. Currently, Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia exports paint and thinners, paint, thinners, pebble, and gravel to Guyana. After our second visit, we expect to add to this steel and roofing materials. Mr. Speaker, another initiative by Export St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, is the Trois Unique Creole. And this is an initiative where we are working with the ambassador of the, the, the diaspora and the consulate in Martinique and Guadeloupe to host a series of events aimed at formalizing and increasing exports to our French Caribbean overseas region, Mr. Speaker. The agency has conceptualized this program and this includes three days of cultural exchange in Martinique, Guadeloupe, and French Guyana, which is Cayenne, culminating in St. Lucia. Trois-Junet Creole will culminate in St. In St. Lucia during Junet Creole, where people from Martinique, Guadeloupe, and French Guyana will, formally, will be formally invited to participate in St. Lucia's Junet Creole. Again, Mr. Speaker, on the export St. Lucia, you may recall last year we reported on our trip to Dubai. I'm pleased to report, Mr. Speaker, that this trip has resulted in some of our products being on the supermarket shelf, especially our CMOS. Interest has also been shown for other items, including beauty products. Mr. Speaker, Export St. Lucia will lead another mission to Dubai to solidify and convert other leads into exports, thus increasing the export basket and the list of countries that we partner with in trade. On the Export St. Lucia as well, Mr. Speaker, one of our initiatives for this fiscal year is the development is developing the soap industry in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, there has been a Deputy Speaker, there has been a proliferation of manufacturers of soap over the last 10 years. Soap, eh? <laughs> so, soap. Although prospective buyers have expressed significant interest in these products, Mr. Speaker, the growth of soap, soap exports has been hindered by a formidable barrier. And this barrier is the ability to test the soap, Mr. Speaker. And it is quite prohibitive, the cost of testing 
the products. Most times we have to send it overseas, and that is very costly. So now, Mr. Speaker, with the diagnostic lab up at Union, the Ministry of Commerce, the Bureau of Standards and Export St. Lucia are collaborating to advise and oversee the growth and development of soap manufacturing and exporting. The ultimate deliverable is to get our soap manufacturers the necessary certification to meet the demands of our domestic market, like the hotels, and also to get new emerging export markets. I encourage all soap manufacturers to take note and present themselves either to Export St. Lucia or the Ministry of Commerce, as we are ready and willing to work with you. Mr. Speaker, another area of focus for us this year is the bread, to increase our export of breadfruit. Mr. Speaker, Export St. Lucia has identified breadfruit as a priority crop for export based on its unique characteristic and market potential. And I want to confirm that because over 10 years ago, or eight years ago, when we actually did a tour of the United States, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey at the time, and we visited the large markets there, every market wanted the St. Lucia breadfruit. So the, we, there is a market in the US for our breadfruit. There's no question about this. The work we have to do is the preparation. How do, what work do we have to do in terms of addressing what you call uh, the pruning of the trees, um, the harvesting, the post-harvesting, and, and that type of work. So this year, we have agreed to collaborate closely with our partners at the Ministry of Agriculture. And Export St. Russia will do something else. It is going to, because of the nature of the fruit, uh, we are going to explore various branding strategies and initiatives to showcase the unique quality of St. Lucia's breadfruit and highlight its benefits to consumers. By raising the profile of the fruit in the international market, we hope to increase demand and create new opportunities for St. Lucia breadfruit growers and exporters. In the area of CMOS, Mr. Speaker, we've seen exponential growth in the export market for CMOS. But one of the things we want to do in this fiscal year is to focus on value added in key export areas. These value added products, such as CMOS powder, capsules, gels, and other derivatives, have undergone development and refinement for the purpose of exports. These pioneering products have gained substantial traction and demonstrate significant potential for expansion in the export market, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, these interventions are all aimed at growing our local economy and increasing our manufacturing sector which has grown by 11.4% in 2022, the highest since 2007. I'll now turn my attention to the Department of Consumer Affairs. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I want to speak on the area of consumer protection, and I want to say with the passing of the Consumer Protection Act, the issue of consumer protection is no longer a dream, but a reality. No longer would our Consumer Affairs Department hope that our suppliers of goods and services would do the right thing. Now, we have a structure. We have established two legal bodies for the protection of consumers in St. Lucia. One, the Consumer Protection Council, and two, the Consumer Protection Appeals Tribunal. 
Mr. Speaker, there is now the avenue for consumers redress where parties can reach an amicable solution. My ministry is very pleased that we have this avenue for our consumers. Consumers do not have to go to the courts, but now if there is an issue, there is an avenue for the supplier and the consumer to sit down and get it sorted out. Mr. Speaker, under this area, I want to focus a bit on the competition law and policy. This is a very important issue for us in St. Lucia at this time. My ministry is committed to monitoring and regulating the local business environment so as to ensure that trade and other commercial activities are done in a manner that promotes economic efficiency in the production of goods and the supply of services. Accordingly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this is an area that will be given renewed attention in this fiscal year. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you will appreciate as part of our efforts to maximize the welfare of our consumers, there is a need to prohibit or eliminate as far as possible anti-competitive or abusive practices by business enterprises operating in our market. In addition, our market, as our market develops and becomes more sophisticated, we are likely to see changes in the scale, structure, and relationship among firms as they seek to grow and to formalize strategies to better compete in the local or regional market. This may result in mergers and acquisitions, various alliances, and the creation of more horizontal or vertically integrated companies. Among other strategies, in an effort to create more viable and competitive business enterprises. I must hasten to add that as a signatory to the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, which establishes the CARICOM single market and economy, we as a country have obligations with respect to the regional body, regional region's policies on competition. More specifically, we are required to have in place the necessary institutional arrangements in terms of the legislative measures and administrative procedures to ensure compliance with the rules of competition. Mr. Deputy Speaker, my ministry will provide a contact person to deal with complaints associated with anti-competitive behavior which may have taken place in a given sector in our market. I now turn, move from competition to cooperation. And in that area, I will speak on the reposition of the cooperative sector. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as administrator of the Cooperative Society Act and the minister responsible for cooperatives, I'm committed to taking the necessary action to revitalize and reposition the cooperative sector. Since its establishment, Mr. Speaker, this sector has played a critical role in our economy in terms of complementing household incomes and providing financial resources to St. Lucians. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the clearest evidence and testament to the value of cooperatives and credit unions in the lives of its members can be seen in the significant growth in the number of credit union accounts, which is estimated at over 142,464 in 2022. The credit union movement has a loan portfolio of EC1 billion which is approximately 14% of the total asset base of the banking sector. Mr. Deputy Speaker, while on one hand, many of our credit unions have embraced technology 
as the ATM machine and have good corporate governance practices. Others, unfortunately, have recorded unsatisfactory performances, which have resulted in regulatory interventions. For this reason, credit unions must be empowered with the regulatory framework needed to enable them to adequately identify and deal with potential risk to improve their performance. As a result, regulators in St. Lucia and within the ECCU region have expressed their concerns regarding recurrent governance, poor governance, and high level of non-performing loans in some credit unions. In light of this, Mr. Deputy Speaker, regulators in the ECCU area have enacted legislation. However, our legislation for St. Lucia is lagging behind. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have a draft bill and we've had significant consultation on the draft cooperative bill. We are hoping to pass this bill during this financial year. Mr. Deputy Speaker, one of the main areas highlighted in the draft bill is deposit insurance. The Cooperative Society Bill will have a deposit guarantee facility and a stabilization fund for credit unions, which guarantees the automatic protection, compensation, or return of funds in the event of systemic risk and failure of a credit union or other financial cooperative society. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I will now focus a bit on the non-financial cooperatives. As we looked at this sector, Mr. Deputy Speaker, some of the challenges faced by the non-financial sector include high energy cost, aging membership and human resource capacity constraints, inadequate equipment and facilities, need for greater adherence to proper entrepreneurial managerial practices, and high cost of direct input. In response to some of these challenges, the cooperative department will embark on a process of handholding to provide close quarter supervision to some of our cooperatives with a view to support their revitalization. In addition, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the department will pursue other interventions such as the establishment of a mentoring relationship between cooperatives that are weak with those that are stronger. We've had one such example between the Black Bay Farmers Cooperative and credit unions in the community. Mr. Speak, Deputy Speaker, we have already taken steps to address the high cost of energy faced by our fisher folk through the solarization of free fishing cooperatives in this fiscal year. In response to the reality of facing an aging cooperative sector, the ministry will sensitize our young people to the principles of cooperatives by inviting them to participate in various initiatives with the aim of developing a junior and youth cooperative subsector. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as Minister for Commerce, I represent all businesses, large, medium, small. We focus quite a bit on the MSMEs. We focus on the cooperative sector. And now I want to focus on the large businesses by speaking a bit on the electronic single window. 
in establishing an enabling business environment. We in St. Lucia need to initiate an electronic single window. In the world of global globalization, trading across borders must become easier and safer, and that is critical. Many governments across the world recognize this and have implemented electronic single windows. And this is necessary for trade facilitation. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the single window is also a commitment which St. Lucia has under the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. With the implementation of this single window, all government agencies dealing with imports and export related permits and certificates will be linked through a digital interface via a virtual platform. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I know that we have spoken about this for a little while. But this project has been very it's long outstanding. But I know that the key players on this project, which is SLASPA, Customs, the um, DigiGov group of persons, there are some differences. Everybody wants to stick to their own piece of software. Everyone wants, custom wants to keep a secure, this one wants to keep this, this one wants to keep this, and it's, it's been a challenge. So we at the ministry have, uh, we went out and seek technical assistance from the Canada CARICOM Export Deployment Initiative to assist with the technical specification for the port community system, which will address the bottleneck which we face at our ports. On the business facilitation, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I want to look at the area of business process outsourcing. Earlier, I noted the shift towards technology and digitization and outlined my ministry's strategic policy direction in that area particularly through our MSME Digital Enhancement Program. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I want to highlight the contribution of one of our fastest growing industries in St. Lucia, and that is the business process outsourcing, which generally persons call call centers. Mr. Speaker, this area for us when we look at it is an important area in terms of employment. The BPOs have been instrumental in helping us cushion the impact of youth unemployment as they create job opportunities for our young people, especially our young women. BPOs were able to transition and by having the majority of staff working at home during COVID. They maintain production and maintain income for thousands of households across Central Russia. Mr. Deputy Speaker, considering the sector's steady growth in Central Russia, my ministry will be working closely with Export Promotion Agency, Export Central Russia, and Invest Central Russia to develop a more strategic approach and policy for the sector. The objective is to attract more players in the field of BPOs and knowledge process outsourcing. Mr. Deputy Speaker, BPOs now have moved from just being making calls to using professional services, accounting services, legal services, IT services, Member for architectural Sufre. services. Member for Sufre, for Sijak, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Architectural services and other top level professionals. 
I need yeah, 15 minutes. Member for Denry North. Mr. Speaker, I ask for the invocation of Standing Order 3210 so as to allow the member for Sufre an additional 15 minutes within which to complete her presentation. Members, the question is that Standing Order 3210 be invoked and the member for Sufre for Sejak be given an additional 15 minutes to conclude her presentation. As many have this opinion, say aye. Aye. As many have a contrary opinion, say no. I have it. I have it. Go ahead, member for Sufre for Seja. Thank you, members. Um, Mr. Speaker, under this area, I also want to focus, we want to focus on renewable energy. Mr. Deputy Speaker, a secure and sustained energy supply is critical to national development because we need energy for every sector to function. All sectors have been impacted by the recent surge in oil prices. My government has recognized the impact that global oil prices have had on our country, and so we will adopt a tripartite approach involving government, consumers, and businesses to achieve higher energy security and independence. My ministry's initiative regarding renewable energy, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is such that the government of Taiwan and the Global Enhancement Fund have agreed to donate grant funding to three Fisher cooperatives that have already commenced the conversion effort to renewable energy within this financial year. We will also continue to encourage further private sector participation in renewable energy technologies. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that when I interact with the various businesses, especially our large businesses, they are all saying that they are ready to transition to renewable and they all await the new um, electricity, the revision of the Electricity Supply Act. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this moment, Deputy Speaker, I want to take this moment to thank the Ministry, the Minister for Infrastructure and the Ministry for Infrastructure, as my constituency of Sufre will benefit from the World Bank Caribbean Efficiency Green Energy Building Project, where uh, government institutions such as the Etang Health Center, the Etang School, the Bhutan School, the Sufre Stadium, and the Sufre Hospital will all benefit from this project. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, an area of focus for us going forward in terms of business, environment is the development of the fashion sector. The Ministry of Commerce will continue its work towards the development of, an, of a sustainable fashion sector in St. Lucia. And in this respect, we continue to liaise with the St. Lucia Fashion Council on specific initiatives and work programs that will seek to graduate industry players from the current micro-enterprise status to become part of a local and eventual global value chain within this multi-billion dollar industry. We recognize the move, the need, sorry, to move past the traditional tailor shop and community seamstress into professional design and build of high value outputs. For this reason, the ministry is working to develop a proposal by the Fashion Council to establish a fashion institute right here in St. Lucia that will provide world-class training to, our, to the next generation of fashion enthusiasts, as well as to consider a central distribution hub for St. Lucian fashion. We have been liaising with our sister ministries to further infuse St. Lucia fashion into the fabric of culture and traditional activities, including jazz, Junekeol and Carnival. 
Mr. Deputy Speaker, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to meet the business community in Viewfort together with the Honorable Prime Minister. And out of this meeting came a requirement for the Ministry of Commerce to have a presence in the town of Viewfort. I am extremely pleased that the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance has given a commitment to fund an office in Viewfort. And I'm also extremely pleased that a member of the private sector, St. Blue Metals, have agreed to furnish that office. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is what moving together really means. Government and private sector responding to the needs on the ground. Together, we transform. Together, we achieve. Together, we progress. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the revised cannabis regime shall be part of an overarching regime for regulating substances in St. Lucia. The regime is conceptualized to include cannabis at the initial stage and later expanded to include other regulatory, regulated sorry, substances. The regime, Mr. Speaker, is not just the suggestion of a few, but the work, but it, but it, it was the development of many. Over the last few years, we've had significant dialogue in the area of cannabis. I wish to assure the public that great effort has been invested in the development of this regime to ensure that the proposed international compliant regime for cannabis will adequately permit commercial activity under the heading of medicinal, industrial, and scientific research. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this we will do under what you call a controlled substance regulatory authority. Mr. Speaker, based on the undertaking to enact legislation for this cannabis regime and the advanced stage of development of this act, it is expected that the authority would have its effect comm effective commencement in this fiscal year 2023-24. And I am extremely pleased that the Minister for Finance has facilitated this by ensuring that there is an initial amount of half a million dollars in the estimates for which I thank him. Mr. Deputy Speaker, a critical enabling mechanism to this budding industry will be the support services through the Ministry of Health, Substance Abuse Secretariat, and the Bureau of Health Education, as it is necessary that we remind our citizens of the public health approach to cannabis reform. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Ministry of Agriculture and the National Agriculture Diagnostic Facility will also play a critical role in the facilitation of research in cannabis and assistance to farmers and agro-processors. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the work done in the context of this regime has been long and painstaking, but we intend to see it through. One point that I that is deserving of note in this honorable forum, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is that the interest of St. Lucians in this regime has not, is not, and will not be overlooked. The interest of persons who have been part of this long overdue industry has remained the consideration of this administration and the task force responsible for the development of the regime. 
No foreign interest shall usurp that of the sons of the soil. We cannot, however, do it for our players. We call upon prospective players in the industry to condition their minds to the changes which will result from this industry and to understand that it will not be business as usual as it cannot remain business as usual. The time is upon us for us to transition from an illicit drug trade to the legitimate pharmaceutical industry. We will ensure that there is a place at the front of the line to keep our locals in. It is your duty to take this opportunity to walk shoulder to shoulder with other reputable, legitimate businessmen and women in St. Lucia. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as the Minister with Responsibility for Commerce, I wish to assure the current and prospective industry players that the government, financial sector, and general population are ready to see you as commercial actors and legitimate contributors to the economy and encourage you to see yourself likewise. It is the next and most important step in St. Lucia's cannabis story. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I move now to the free zone. In our free zone, there are over 23 free zone businesses in St. Lucia, and they operate within six locations. They are involved in manufacturing, processing, trading, and services. The goods distribution free zone is, a, is home to a variety of industries, including pharmaceuticals, medicinal devices, manufacturing, and other services. These businesses provide employment to over 3,000 St. Lucians. Mr. Speaker, this is close to 4% of St. Lucia's employed labor force. Mr. Deputy Speaker, at present, the free zone houses two BPOs. And among them, they employ some 990 employees. And over 90% are young female St. Lucians. We believe that attracting more BPOs to the free zone will improve the country's standard of living and cushion the impact of youth unemployment. Notwithstanding, we believe that the true potential of our free zone has not yet been realized. For this reason, my ministry has embarked on a review of the performance of the sector with a view to maximizing its benefits to the national economy. We are going to do this with assistance from the Canada CARICOM Export Deployment Initiative. Mr. Speaker, in concluding today, I want to take a pause to thank a few persons and institutions. I want to conclude by putting on record my appreciation, my thanks to my permanent secretary and staff at the Ministry of Commerce, our allied agencies, my cabinet colleagues, the persons who serve on our various boards and committees, members of the private sector organizations, and some key partners that have made significant contribution to the work of the Ministry of Commerce. Let me thank the government and people of Taiwan from Ambassador Peter Chen for their invaluable support in funding some of our MSME initiatives. Secondly, I want to thank the OAS who's also assisting with funding technical support for MSME loan grant recipients and for supporting the Women Empowerment Initiative. I want to place on record my gratitude to the Caribbean Development Bank for funding the MSME loan grant facility. 
And fourthly, I want to thank the government of Canada through the four-year Canada CARICOM export deployment mechanism by providing very useful technical assistance to my ministry in four of the eight key areas of focus. Today, the ministry has secured assistance in four areas. The deployment of a strategic plan for the free, free zone in Viewfort. Secondly, we have used the experience of Canada in developing the commercial and medicinal cannabis industry. And we are fortunate to have a legal drafts person to work with the Cannabis Task Force. Uh, thirdly, we got technical assistance to formulate the requirement for the electronic single window. And the fourth assignment is the review of the effectiveness of the cooperative sector, both the financial societies and producer cooperatives. This assignment is expected to begin within the coming weeks. As parliamentary representative for SUFRE, I'm also looking forward to using the services of this, in this facility, both for the Sufre Foundation and the SMME. Mr. Speaker, I wish on behalf of my ministry and the Sufre community to welcome this totally free and highly effective program for technical assistance. We wish to offer again our thanks to the Government of Canada, the High Commission in Barbados, and the managers of that program. Mr. Deputy Speaker, having outlined our plans and policy direction for the coming fiscal year, we are confident that if we focus our attention and implement the initiatives outlined in the aforesaid thematic areas, we will achieve success in terms of setting the foundation for enhanced growth and development of our private sector in the near term and thereafter. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the elements of the policy direction and work program presented above provide us with the necessary framework to build a resilient and competitive economy based on a strong and robust MSME sector. Through this plan of action, we can begin to revitalize the business sector and help it to create more wealth, higher income, and employment in St. Lucia. This plan, which encourages the adoption of best practice, such as reducing dependency on fossil fuel as a source of energy, will help to develop a more sustainable and vibrant market for existing sectors such as the cooperative movement as well as new sectors such as cannabis. Therefore, Mr. Deputy Speaker, with the support of the business community, the consuming public, together with, together with the joint and collaborative efforts of the various departments of government, affiliated bodies, allied agencies, ministries, and friendly governments. We will implement our stated policy initiatives and achieve our desired results and objectives in the coming fiscal year 2023-2024 and beyond. I want to take this moment again to thank the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, for the support that he has provided us. I want to specifically, specifically thank all my cabinet colleagues for their support through this journey. And as I'm about to take my seat, I want to say that I support wholeheartedly the Appropriation Bill 2023-2024. May, may God continue to guide our beloved country. And may we always put our best foot forward. I thank you.